right. Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here, Mick here, and Jason Colt. <laughs> More audio. Woo! Yeah. Welcome, guys. Yes, welcome indeed. Um, Dan has just played an avant-garde piece that we've called "The Day We Met Walrus Audio." <laughs> Yeah, and we wrote it before we came here, and then he just learned it. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, our new so. new direction. He wrote yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so welcoming these guys from Oklahoma, USA. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Oklahoma yeah. is in the U.S. Right in the middle. Well, since we left, it's still. I think it still is. So. Right in the middle. Tornado, yeah. tornado Alley. Okay. Yep. Please do a pedal called the Ruprecht. <laughs> the Ru from Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Yeah. <laughs> Does it have Oklahoma ties? Oklahoma, 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 Oklahoma. That's right. That's right. Man. Okay. I saw. I haven't seen that <laughs> movie right. in twenty years. Winter now. It's been a long time. The rubric. May I use the bathroom? <laughs> so these guys are on some sort of. Uh, I'm just going to go right past it. Please. Uh, some some extended European tour. For what reason? Uh, so there's two shows here. There's the UK guitar show. And then uh, there's Guitar Summit in uh, Mannheim, Germany. So we're kind of doing both shows and then hitting our favorite people in between. Not hitting them, but visiting them. <laughs> and only hitting them if it requires that they be As hit. they move away. So. And they've got their priorities right because yeah. they went to Anderton's before they came to us. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if you wanna, But if this video comes out first, then... Yeah, yeah. We're yeah, on a race it, to the edit. So if yeah, you want to we'll see the really out. serious stuff, watch the Anderton's video. <laughs> right, if you want right. to see something much more entertaining and enlightening, then watch <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you, no. so. you, you yeah. know we're all friends, right? You know, you know yeah, that. I know now. Yeah, yeah. We were friends. Um, anyway, yeah. so we thought we'd do a quiz. Okay. That's great. Yes, yeah, it's an icebreaker. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, I went to college. Uh, this quiz. is that pedal show versus Walrus Audio quiz. Um, well, it's actually Dan versus Walrus Audio. Okay, you're the quiz master. I'm the quiz master. You okay. can call me Bamba Gascoigne for anyone old enough to remember who Bamba Gascoigne is. Dan, this is your buzzer. There you go. <laughs> there we go. Ooh. And um, Walrus Audio, this is your buzzer. Um, it's a 432 hertz tuned <laughs> yeah. three-dimensional modern orchestral triangle with striking device. Yeah. The first question is, uh, when was Walrus Audio founded? Oh, Dan. 2011. Correct. 1-0. Mm. Uh, okay, get serious. All right. Serious. The next question is, uh, how many people work at Walrus Audio? <laughs> uh, it's Dan again. 13. <laughs> Correct. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> game on. Get ready. You, you're like, you're on. It's the, not, the, it's like kind of not fair, but. It is. Like I have distance. He needs a screwdriver. I have distance and, and all you need is tension. Right. Okay. Uh, what's the name of the artist called who does all this? <laughs> oh, cult. <laughs> Matthew <laughs> Price. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. No, <laughs> incorrect, Dan. Not Matthew Price at all. What is it? Nathan Price. <laughs> ah. Nathan Price. There's lots Matthew, of them too. There's it's a, there's Matthew Nathan two, Price. Two or three of them. Uh, yeah. Okay. First uh, name, so middle name. Adam Forster. And, I think that was, yeah. I don't think anyone yeah. won that. Anyone got that wrong. Mm. Um, fix that on the website. And uh, how many pedals are currently in the Walrus Audio Cult? Uh, 11. 8. 16. I'll say eight. We count 16 on the website. 16? Yeah. <laughs> sounds like <laughs> Sounds like it's 16. <laughs> Including the new EB10. Uh, okay. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 16. In brackets, 16 I had. Okay, now your individual questions. Hmm. Um, Colt, uh, what is Dan's favorite Walrus audio pedal? Uh, I think it's the uh, the DNM drive. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Got uh, it. It is actually the ARP87 delay. Oh, mm. ARP87 delay. Yeah. Um, Dan? What is Jason's favorite Walrus Audio pedal? <laughs> Dan. I didn't even have a... uh, I believe it's the Julia. That's right. Ah, this is brilliant. Get in! Oh. Yeah. Uh, Jason, what did Dan have for breakfast this morning? Uh, this is easy. Eggs. Dude, I do intermittent fasting. No breakfast for Dan. Oh, oh come, come on! on. Come on. Oh. Dan, what did Jason dream about last night? <laughs> Oh. Germanium transistors. <laughs> no. Overtaking the how world. You, how do you know this stuff? Uh, yeah. He told me it was actually germanium clipping diodes. So, <laughs> oh, fair oh. enough. Yeah, but half a point. Cemetery. War of the Worlds. Little germanium transistors. Three leggers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and your bonus question. Colt, what is this? It's That's easy. It's a carpet. <laughs> <laughs> I get it? It's a copo. <laughs> Dan, <laughs> what is this? 
It's a plectrum. Plectrum. When did we start like the horns? No, they're individual questions. Oh, sure. Okay. Cool. So that's the end of the quiz. I think we've learned a lot about Walrus Audio. <laughs> the scores are Dan, 6,941 and a half. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Walrus Audio, 10. You did well. That's super, that's not bad. No, super deflating. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Low score wins. That's a terrible way to start. Right? Yeah. You can have that. We should take that home. Did it work it. as an icebreaker, do you think? Bring that on the plane. I think, yeah, I think yeah. we're there. Are we I friends now? There. Yeah, I yeah. think the ice is broken. The first time I met Colt, I think I called you Cody and accused you <laughs> from being from um, Earthquaker, maybe? Yeah, and you know what? I just kind of took it. You know, and I was like, you know, I'll just I'll take that. That's fine. Cody from Earthquaker. I was like, I'll probably never talk to this guy again. And so <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know, once if somebody mislabels you and it's a fine association, you just you just kind of go with it. So my neighbor calls me Mason <laughs> <laughs> because there's a sweet, nice guy named Mason way down the street. And he's really nice. And it's like, well, if she thinks I'm Mason, that's a compliment. So I just never correct her. Her name's Virgie. <laughs> you can probably edit this part out too. <laughs> uh, so, Colt, you are president, yeah, of the yeah. United States of no, of, of <laughs> oh, the United yeah, States yeah. of War. And, and, and States Jason, you, do you have an official job title? I think it's general manager slash engineer. We we'll just go with that. Engineer. I never chief say chief. Engineer. I never yeah. say chief. So you do the majority of the design stuff. Head mm -hmm. that, up, yeah. that yeah. stuff up. And you Head drive that Mercedes. So that's uh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. I wish. No, I drive my wife's car from high school. So, uh, yeah. There's no no uh, no balance on it, though. It's great. Uh, just, yeah, sales, Head marketing, uh, you know, in-house operations, and, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. Dealer network, you know. All the good, fun stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. All the, yeah, everything else. Yeah. So One of the things that's always struck me about uh, the... So we live in this age, right, where to anyone, and when I say new, I mean, if you've come to the pedal world in the last 10 years or into guitar and that's you're starting to discover all of this stuff, you're blessed with an unbelievable number of really cool brands of mm. which you guys are one. Mm. Before that, and let's go back even further than that, when Dan and I were kids, you know, there was only Boss, yep. Yep. Arion, maybe MXR and there's been this blossoming sort of if you take you guys Keeley Earthquaker who we mentioned before blimey just keep listing them off there it's become this massively diverse market of really cool stuff so I guess the question on the end of that is how do you guys go from I know a little bit about circuits to a company how does that mm. develop uh I think you know I think Part of it starts with branding, you know, the way that you brand and present yourself as a company, the way that you, uh, that, you know, caring about the way that, that your product is, is received and taken in by uh, people, by fans and things like that. And I think after that, um, I think, it, I can't speak for everybody, but, but after that, I think the most important thing is quality. And uh, not just like build and, and uh, component quality, but but audio quality so that the vast majority of people that, that pick up your product can mm. dial in something pretty fast mm. and sound something that makes sense that they would want to use on a song. Mm. And so... Uh, it's that, interesting. The first pedals that we got from you guys, um, I think we had the, the ARP87 and then... Quite quickly behind that, we had the Fathom Reverb, mm -hmm. and it was immediately obvious to us we couldn't get a bad sound out of them. You know what I mean? They just sound like straight out of the box. Bang. Fucking, it's like these things are awesome. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is that they look just brilliant. Um, and we're talking about the Thanks. the uh, you had a couple, you've got a couple of artists, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but yeah, always the you know the visual thing is strike very striking mm -hmm. you know uh yeah which is important thanks appreciate it i think every uh every pedal has a name that kind of derives from the type of effect that it is mm -hmm. and so you know uh the julia is a chorus and the julia is a is kind of a you know folklore water monster but it's also a a weird phenomenon that happened in the ocean. So kind of watery chorus, you get to Julia. And so we try to have the art, you know, kind of match the 
that what we think the sound looks like, which That's is real heady. Cool. But it's, it's <laughs> but yeah. you might think it's arbitrary, but it's typically typically has a little bit more of a tie than yeah. just this is a cool picture. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So Fathom makes sense. Uh, ARP eighty seven was that? What, what's that it's about? Two. You're the space guy. <laughs> Go for it. Long ago, uh, the ARP eighty seven is actually uh, uh, two galaxies um, that are crashing into each other. So kind of, uh, it you know when when we saw it, and actually our media guy uh, Tyler, our creative director, found it and and saw these this picture of these two galaxies. Um, and uh, as we're kind of looking for a theme, because we're kind of digging into space because, you know, trails and delay, you know, it mm. feels very, you know, atmospheric and, and otherworldly. And so you're looking for space themes. He found the picture of the, the ARP-87 and uh, it looked like a like what delay should look like, you know, in the <laughs> cosmos. And uh, and so we, we kind of went with it. We didn't put the galaxies on there because we couldn't get a cool picture that we thought would be cool in a pedal. But we put like a, you know, a spaceship on there and yeah that's where it came from that's where it comes from yeah. okay yeah. and uh can you settle a lillian debate for us we we debated when we first looked at the lillian we knew that there were there turns out there are four lillians involved in aviation uh in history really? yeah so yeah. you were lillian yarnley yarnley yeah yeah okay yeah so she was part program. of the yeah the WASP program, the Women uh, Air Service Pilot Program, and it was a program in World War II that uh, that trained women to fly planes and service airplanes because all the men were out fighting in World War II, but they still had you know a need for uh, a thousand hands to to come in and service the airplanes, and so Shuffle that was kind of the yeah. on ramp for women to serve in the armed forces. And she was the best pilot from that program. From what we've read, we haven't flown with her, but <laughs> we, yeah, we'll take her Wikipedia's uh, word for it. Obviously, that's not on the board today. If you want to check out that video, we did it a few months back. Um, I don't know if it was a pick and mix or whatever it was. And it's actually on my board. Oh, it's on your yeah. Is it? Okay. Uh, the Lillian's a wonderful phaser with the the blend control, which so if you're doing a wet dry thing and being able to mm -hmm, take all the direct mm -hmm, out, mm -hmm. and so you just have this phase between the two amplifiers. Oh. Magic, really magic. <laughs> that sounds fun. We should yeah. do that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. If, if only yeah. it was on the board. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Um, so 2011 till now, 13 people. Yeah. Worldwide. Yeah. Distribution and sales. It's mad, isn't it? It really is. Yeah, I think so. If I sit there and think about it, uh, it it is a little crazy. A lot's changed um, in those years, but. It's been a long journey, a lot of joys, a lot of really great days, and a lot of really, really bad days, too. So, <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know, of running a business. It just yeah. happens well, like that. We could probably talk about that for hours. Yeah. Let's, listen to, <laughs> let's listen to some pedals. Um, yeah. What do we want to talk about today? We want to talk a little bit about uh, some gain stages, didn't we, Dan? Yeah. Something that I want to, that for reasons unknown, I haven't yet got my hands on and should, is the 385, inspired by an old cinema projector amp. Is that correct? That's yeah. Right. You got yeah. this one. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was at a Dawes show and... Sorry, um, a what? Dawes. A band called Dawes. Oh, Dawes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's, about to, let's stop and let's just yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. Dawes. Hold on. We need a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's <laughs> a place we could do that for um, Yeah, and like the, <clears throat> they just had these, what I now know to be film projectors, you know, and they were open. They kind of have this like front that opens and they're lit up and I'm kind of thinking like this looks like a homebrew kind of tube amp thing. But I, again, didn't know at the time what they were. Um, started digging in, learned about Austin Hooks, this guy in L.A. that um, converts these old um, pr film projectors to tube amps. And didn't even realize at the time that it's actually part of it. Right. I mean, you take the projector off and hmm. underneath is like dual 6v6, like just sitting there with wow. a quarter inch input on the front. I mean, uh, it, it's just crazy. How blessed. A volume and tone. Right. And it, and its job was to make the sound for the film. Yeah. 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 So it wasn't doing some other job. It's, right. It's, and like the cabinet's got like this like four inch Alnico speaker like built into the side. I mean, you can like run that for fun and it's real cool, real vibey. Uh, or you can, you know, run to an external cab and that's what they were doing. And um, yeah, so we were really wanting to do like an amp style overdrive. And we'd kicked around the idea and we'd kind of thought, oh, well, OK, is this going to be a Fender thing? Is it going to be a Marshall? You know, yeah. like. What vibe are we, we going to go gonna for? Go. Yeah. And you thought, no, it's yeah, going to well, be a, it's going to be a, we just like look projector. Right. Well, thing. we just looked around and it's like, but well, we're just jumping into the mix. Like all these other yeah, people have done yeah. this really well for a long time. And so how do we kind of separate ourselves and do something that's just different? And I thought, 
what are these all about? Like, let's just dig into this. Yeah. Um, and what so, is it about? How does it differ from what well, we should hit? Let's, let's hear yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it's we, just, so, so I got one, right, off eBay the, for $35 oh, with this, like, custom um, sewn canvas cover. I mean, I was just like, how did this happen? Um, a friend of ours, Gideon, found it, and I stole it from him. Um, he's probably still mad at me for that. But, um, yes. yeah, I just, I, so I should say, Austin I, I converts them, and he kind of does his own, like, sorcery inside, and it's mm -hmm. amazing. Um, but out just straight out of the box, so to speak, um, you can plug into it. And I did, and it was just, it just screamed. And yeah. I was just like, ah, uh, okay, this is a cool sound. Like, let's let's put this in a box somehow. So... Transist yeah, well, now we can, we can listen to it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right, two amps today. We have the Matchless uh, HC30, and we have the Two Rock uh, Classic Reverb Signature. <laughs> well done, Dan. Thank you. <laughs> Pawn shop finds. Yeah. I, I just, I don't know why. A couple of crappy old amps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so they are. Sounds awful. Yeah, let's not turn anything on. Let's just keep that. Okay, so, uh, right, 385. <laughs> Is that what it sounds like to you? Do you hear that when? I just, I hear that amp. Like I hear that sound that yeah. when I plugged in, I was just like, this is crazy. It's just like, got this like hair and bite and like grain to it. That's yeah. cool yeah, in yeah, a really yeah. cool way. Yeah. It and is it's, unique too. It is yeah. really, yeah. really yeah. cool. Cause it's kind of got that little breaking amp thing going on, mm -hmm. but then with the bottom and top, you can get it just in the right, in the, in right, the right place. Yep, yep. But I find a lot of those sounds can be really, uh, really affect the the transients and the, yeah. and the top end they sort of get really compressed which is really cool but check out the feel on that in the front of the note it's it's really special um can i have some harmonic tremolo please <laughs> That's nice. That's it's fun. refreshing to hear great guitar players yeah. play oh. this stuff. Yeah. You know, because you know, people aren't calling us to go on tour with them. They're calling us to build pedals for their tour. And yeah. so it's yeah. like, so everything, even before it comes out, it goes to guys that are gonna give it a really good workout like that. And so it's just nice to hear. It's like, oh, that's how it's Here supposed in person. to sound. You know, we right. play it in the office and in the, you know, the room where we build and develop everything. And it's like, oh, that sounds pretty good. Shut the door. Yeah. <laughs> it is, a, yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. When we're working on a fuzz or something, it's, it gets, it's, yeah. yeah. It, get, it gets a it's little taxing. agitating, you know. A special thing about that is how um, dynamic it is. Yeah. Right? So that's if you back you off saying. the volume yeah. even just a little bit and then back off and, and uh, back off your attack, it'll clean up, but then you can just like, Real quick, rip it back and dig yeah. in. And tell you what, we've heard that. So let me just um, try a different guitar. A sec. Try something slightly more familiar. I was getting all Blake Mills there. If I could, um, mm. 
get more of Lake Mills, that would be even better. But, mm. <laughs> um, that's definitely what's in my head when I hear that kind of sound. Yeah, yeah right. And that was the next progression. Um, after the Da show, after digging into where the amps came from, after digging into hooks, it's like, well, now who's this guy? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, the Hi-Ho record was on the scene and we just, it fell in love. We just went crazy. And that's where, the, like, the monument, you know, came out of that as well. Did it? It, so it, it really did, did yeah. I was just, wow. This is this coolest, like, that. combination, coolest sound. But, well, Joey introduced us to the Hi-Ho album. Mm -hmm, right. Well, yeah. And where's your horn gone, Dan? We can give Joey a honk. <laughs> And I guess you guys can honk Blake. Do you know him? You yeah. met him? No, we don't know him personally. Ah, oh, have you met him? We don't know him personally yet. Have you met him? I'm gonna no, still honk him. for him. Have you met him? We haven't met him. Yeah, that's the rules of the does he, does he, does he yeah. play? Any we of have these some photos yeah. of him he does using play the pedals, pedals you can honk in him. the studio. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From guys yeah. that have tracked with him, they sent us a couple photos, and they said, "Do not share." And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> he's, very, he's very private, but uh, and we, yeah. I guess we shouldn't even talk. We'll about stop it. there. I yeah, guess. We'll talk about yeah. It. If you don't know who Blake Mills is, please check him out, and uh, particularly the album either Hey Ho or Hi Ho, depending on how yeah. you would uh, yeah. pronounce that. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's have a listen to that clean up then I say. Okay. Just sitting there right on the edge all the time where it's just about yeah. to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Really, really, really cool. Nice. Okay. Um I'm really the, glad I wanted to check that out for the longest time. That's the great. Iron Horse, I guess we could look at we looked at that in our rat show, didn't we? When we, did. we when we talked about uh rat mm -hmm. derived things. things. I think what did we we both remarked again on the dynamic in the headroom, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Start a band with those chords. That's good. <laughs> you should play the chords to Park Life and see if we don't get a uh, copyright strike. That would be interesting. Wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, he showed us how to play that, though, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, just open E. Yeah. Uh That's enough. Don't play anymore. <laughs> They'll get us. Yeah. <laughs> We've been gotten before. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I, that must be yeah. fun. Yes. We have two for other reasons. Well, know. we were idiots. We we did, decided to do a um, were idiots. We are idiots. We <laughs> but on this particular day we were special kinds of idiots where we decided to do a show on acoustic guitars and sat yeah. there and did a harmony version of "Here Comes the Sun" by the Beatles, thinking that would be a nice thing, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. And it's like ninety nine point eight percent of your ad revenue. But then yeah, yeah, yeah. the best one was we had the um, the solo oh, the solo Dallas the solo Dallas which is the preamp to the wireless unit oh, used by ACDC mm. okay yeah which is a big part of the sound Mick played an ACDC riff like literally seconds long <clears throat> you I mean oh, wow. you know in a different order those chords yeah. might be they yeah. might be something like that. But in a different order, slightly. Yeah. <laughs> and how many songs in the world have ever had that? Anyway, and it was a literally few. about yeah, four bars. Yeah. Oh man. Hmm. Yeah. Even more gratifying, they use really complex recognition software. Yeah. They are, yeah to pick right. it out. To pick it out. Yeah. Wow. They thought I 
I'm sad because you know. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it. Yeah, I'd frame that. I'd frame yeah, that. Yeah. Cease and desist or whatever <laughs> YouTubers get. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, <laughs> overdrive pedals then. So you, um, the war horn that we like very much, uh, mid humped overdrive, we actually sent that away with Ed O'Brien. So okay. that's not here. He can keep it. He can keep it. There you go. You heard it here. Um, down there, honk. Ed, see this? He's your friend. Ah, Ed, lovely Ed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's such a nice guy. He's We're gonna just the best someday. guy. Yes, yeah, man. Yeah. But um, we'll come on to the EB10 in a sec. But I think, from our end anyway, the thing that you guys seem to be known best for yeah. is the modulation stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, which is an fair? accident. Yeah, yeah, fair. yeah. I mean. You know, we were talking earlier and feel like every pedal company kind of is identified by, you know, whatever overdrive of theirs is most popular. And, you know, not that we haven't ever tried to make that happen, but I think people <laughs> gravitate towards the modulations uh, like way more, which is great. And uh, I, th I mean, it even started that way with the Voyager, but it, yeah, it sort sure. of like steered it, away. For sure deviated yeah, yeah. by accident. Um, but. How hard is it though? So, you, I mean, you, you mentioned that about overdrive pedals. There, how many overdrive pedals must there be on the market? Like, oh, tens. <laughs> or thousands, <laughs> right? Yeah, for sure. So, and thousands, there's probably thousands of really good ones too. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, thing. Yeah. It's like, you know, some of the best stuff you've never heard of, you know? So, how long does it take? So, you two have a conversation, you go, mm. right, I know what we need to do. We need to do a overdrive pedal based on a cinema projection amp. Mm -hmm. How many seconds is it before you go and talk to whoever does the marketing? Uh, <laughs> it's uh, maybe 30 seconds, <laughs> maybe 45 seconds sometimes. Yeah, it's so just, it just I depends. Think it, yeah, no, it's a, it's so Walrus is a really small team. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, it really starts out, you know, it doesn't necessarily start out with just me and Jason working for a while. And then we go over to the creative director, Tyler, and then the artist guy, Philip. Like it really is, we're all kind of thinking of all the ideas, you know, in unison or like at the house at NAMM one night, or yeah. it's all just a, a conversation and things like that. Or like, there's a lot of happy accidents, you know, and you stumble mm -hmm. onto something, stumble onto a sound, and I'll just be sitting there playing. And for sure, not because of my playing, but there's just this inspiring sort of sound. And then I'll, I'll look up and there's like eight people behind me in my office. And I'm like, where did you guys come from? And they're all just like, just want to hear this interesting sound, um, you know, or I'll be working on an idea and I'll just yell for everybody. I'll just be like, get in here. And like, you know, like think through this. Is this cool? Is this not cool? What do you think about this sound? And there's plenty of times where I'm bouncing all kinds of ideas off the crew, you mm. know? Um, it is great to hear, isn't it? Because that's how you would hope it would work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. 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 Except we, we have talked to people where they say, no, 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 I sit in a cubicle and then it goes to marketing. And then six months later, they tell me if I can hit go on it. And sure, sure. That, it we, works it, too. As long that's as we can way keep to do that it. from happening, or <laughs> we're going to do that. Yeah. 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 The, the art and the names kind of come together in a different sort of meeting. Um, and those are probably the ones that are the most interesting, the most entertaining, if you were able to just like be a fly on the wall. They get those. offensive. Yeah, 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 of course. Because like, people like bring ideas, names, right? people bring a bag of ideas that they really want, you know, that they really feel strongly about. And then, you know, somebody says, ah, oh, that's really stupid. Or <laughs> that, or that's already a pedal, you know? Yeah, or yeah. That's there's already, a lot of that. Yeah. Well, did, you, did you Google anything before you came to this meeting? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, no, I didn't. Have you ever had to cease and desist on anything? We have, we for sure have. <laughs> Yeah, we have three had, weeks ago. You want to talk we, about that, or should we move on? We should. Oh yeah, <laughs> we should probably. We should probably move on. Okay. But uh, um, probably the worst one. Uh, I don't know if I can talk about it. If okay, I you can talk about yeah, it. Yeah. It's just, I mean, Lucasfilm is pretty serious. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, we got a yeah, Lucasfilm yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, we were wanting well, to do, yeah. we were wanting to yeah. do a uh, like a Star Wars series for the for Episode uh, Seven when it yeah. came out. And, and all uh, we wanted to do was the Princess Leia drive and the, and the <laughs> so I Luke's thought hands, the drive. Hands so hands so here's what I did. Right. I was like, he well, was we'll, we'll commission stuff. our own artwork. Yeah. We won't use anything. We'll commission our own artwork. And uh, and paint it on the pedals. We'll do Solo, Chewie, and uh, uh, who else did we do? Solo, Chewie, uh, Darth Vader. Did yeah, the next Han wing. Solo. The Vader Fader. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You write that down. Um, uh, oh, come on. And, then, the, you know, and I was like, boot. just, to, boot, I was like, yeah. just to just to cover my bases, I'm going to try to call the, 
the guy, the licensing guy. And he never called me back. I called him every like two weeks for eight months. And I was like, it, this is how I go. I was like, well, if they're not going to get back with me, then screw them. I was like, I'm going to just release them. And then we released them. And <laughs> they, got that, later. they got back real quick. Yeah. 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 So we didn't fulfill any, but we released them. We just announced them before they right, went right, for right. sale. And it was, it's still, that was probably four years ago. And it's still to date our most viral post. <laughs> I mean, uh, people ah. went nuts. And uh, yeah, we could have made yeah. loads of yeah. money that we never made. And they, <laughs> they, so somebody calls the shop and they're like, hey, what's your fax number? Philip, our guy, answered the phone and he puts the phone on me. He's like, Colt, what's our fax number? And I was like, get on the phone, laugh at that guy and say, yo, it's 2015. Nobody has a fax machine anymore. <laughs> he goes, okay. Hey, he, my boss tells me to say it's 2015. Nobody has a fax machine anymore. And then he's like, well, what's he's, your email? He's like, oh, then, okay, an email address. And he, he gave him my address. Email. It's like Lucasfilm cease and desist. And I was like, Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> so we didn't sell any. Yeah, we didn't sell any at all. Like Zero. They They're that. gone. Yeah. I wonder okay. if they've got algorithms going through this. They'll find us. Yeah. 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 So onto the Coca Cola chorus then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We we've always been tempted to name a, a pedal free iPhone because it's like it get, <laughs> it get so, so much, much internet traffic. Yeah. <laughs> the free iPhone drive. Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. Free pizza, free beer. There was a pub yeah. in Australia called Free Beer. The free Beer pub. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow. A big sign in the door free saying tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if, let's just, yeah, touch base on the on the modulations then. Yeah. The the Julia, again, mm -hmm. uh, all analog circuitry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how do you, I mean, you know, where's the inspiration come from to say, okay, we're going to make a chorus and it's going to be different by being X, Y, and Z. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, how does yeah, that start? Yeah, I mean, you know, I saw, we started digging into chorus pedals. Um, a friend of mine, I had never seen a VB2, and I'm right. okay with that. But um, he showed it to me, and I feel like it was kind of before they were cool again. You know, there was okay. like this moment where like yeah. everybody wanted a VB2. And so, that, day, the, that day was an accident because we went down to a studio called Blackwatch Studios in Norman mm -hmm. to kind of find inspiration from sounds. Uh, for a from, different product. From, uh, yeah, for a different product. And then he was like, hey, yeah. have, you, have you ever played one of these? It was a VB2. And we are like, talking about the Boss Vibrato. That's right. VB2. There, there this is, is the yeah. latest Wazacraft <clears throat> version. Right. And this was an old beat up one. You, you know? copied it exactly. And yeah. <laughs> no, but I just, that sound, I was just like, that is so cool. And then I started digging into the mechanics of chorus. Mm. You learn about, you know, the the parallel paths, the wet, wet and dry paths, and mm -hmm. things like that. And then, um, and then I just started noticing all these. I understood why all these pedals had um, chorus vibrato switches. Yep. Um, it's pretty simple. Just turns off the, the dry path. That's it. Yep. And, um, uh, but then I was started thinking, there's a lot of ground between those two yes. sides of that switch. Yeah, you yeah. know, and I'm like, what would it be like if you blend it? If you could just like kind of, you know, blend the ratios together. And so that's, so that's where the DCV switch was born. So let's have a, let's have a quick listen to that. So, with the Julia, you've, this is the blend switch here. Right. Then we've got the direct, and then on the right hand side is the vibrato and mm -hmm. the C for center. So if I blend from direct through to vibrato. <laughs> And as anyone that's ever watched TPS before will know, because we bang on about it all the time talking about wet and dry stuff, now when we blend the direct symbol back in. Magic, magic. Always but makes but, them but what you're talking about, it, and that's th that blend thing. So uh, we've just done a show recently. Um, when I showed you guys the new Thorpey Flanger mm -hmm, that right. has that blend mm -hmm. thing, yeah. and and those shades that you get. So if you have like quite a uh, uh, a lot of modulation in, as far as depth is concerned, right, and then just blend in a hair. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.
It's like background things. I, you know? I yeah. love that. Well, it's it's cool. so cool. Back to what you were saying, if you just had the on-off switch, it would sound like this, right? Which is, I mean, that's two sounds. Yeah. But now there's a bunch of sounds. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But the other thing that I thought was really cool is that you've got a couple of choices of waveform. Now, um, yep. Mick and I were in... London. We were no, we weren't in London. We were in Japan. in Denmark. Right. And at TC Electronic. Oh yeah. That's Denmark, isn't it? Yep. Yep. And we were trying to do a tone print of my CE1. Mm -hmm, right. So we took the, just the the because uh, there's a split on the back of that. Obviously, we can split the wet and the dry mm -hmm, signal. Mm -hmm. So we just had the wet signal and listening to the waveform. Now you think with a chorus mm -hmm. that that waveform is just going to be this lovely smooth yeah, sine right, wave. Right absolutely nothing <laughs> like it right and right. it's just <clears throat> it's crazy yeah. wow. and so you also you've got the option going between the sine wave and a sawtooth wave right right um which is really cool just hear it, just and you it. can't there's no wrong way right yeah of course there, there's a preferred like in the universe way of like a vibrato is sine and chorus is triangle mm -hmm. sawtooth kind of but it, do what you want, you know, what yeah. sounds cool, but yeah, we can hear it. Beautiful, <laughs> really, <laughs> really beautiful. So that's been a big hit for you guys for obvious yeah. reasons. You know, yeah. there's a lot of lot of sounds that you can coax out of that thing. It's fantastic. Um, but the uh, you know again we're talking about analog stuff. So when you come to design a pedal like this, uh, I mean, what's the process? Do you have chips that you like, or you sit there and you you try everything specific for the circuit? You know. Yeah, again, I think that's like circuit to circuit in terms of like how much swapping you do of like sort of these, like the core components, you know, but when it comes to uh, an all analog course, typically that's bucket brigade, right. you know, style. And so you've, now we've got some limited options there, but mm -hmm. um, you know, you do audition some things yes. for sure. And there's a lot of um, more specific filtering in bucket brigade stuff mm -hmm. than you see yeah. in other areas mm -hmm. or in other uh, circuits. So um, some more things to tune and and sort of to audition as you're going along. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing is with um, the introduction of the lag knob, um, you've kind of got to maybe look at the buckets a different way potentially to see sort of the delay range that you want to allow because that's what that's doing, right? And so, so what? let's get into that little bit because that's, yeah. a, cause that's a, such an interesting control. So the lag knob, you're actually changing the timing, changing the, the, the center the time. Center, center yeah. time. Yeah. Um, so... What's the range? Uh, so you're, it's around like 20 to 45 okay. milliseconds, something in, in there. Um, and yeah, you're, it's just allowing you to shift that around. So the, the, the shorter you go, sort of the tighter. Um, Getting into f almost flanger. You're approaching thing. that, yeah. right. It's, it's, it won't quite let you get there. But, yeah. um, and then, you know, the longer you go, the more like lush, watery, the more detune you're able to get, right. um, the more dramatic of a detune. So... Um, so for anyone who doesn't understand that, just briefly, you're varying a delay time there against the... So it, it, think of it like taking a delay pedal, right, and setting it to 30 milliseconds, which most people don't do. That's a really short delay time. Yeah. That's shorter. I, that's a real short slap back. I don't even know what... In it's, my mind, it's, I, it's, it's almost like almost a doubling delay. Yeah, it? it's yeah, almost... Yeah, a, yeah right. Yeah. 
So, but you, you set it there and then just imagine you take your hand and take the, the time pot, say it's an analog delay, right? And then you just go back and forth, right? And that's what the LFO is doing. And um, where you set that delay time to then go back and forth across is what the lag knob determines, yeah. right? Yeah. So, Here? yeah, yeah. It's almost planetary there, you're yeah. getting that yeah, there. Yeah. 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 That's so good. But again, just like the DCV knob opens up a lot of sounds, the lag knob is a parameter that it can be found. Like it is found in a lot of chorus pedals, but mm. it's not on top, right? It's inside yeah. and yeah. it's fixed. Mm. And it's like, well, there's a lot of ground there, yeah. you know? So. That's kind of what brought that to the top of the pedal, so. <clears throat> awesome. Okay, so that's the chorus pedal. When we first heard the monument, it was on Joey Landreth's board. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, we've, we've honked Joey, but <laughs> they, there you go. Joey deserves many honks. Joey, he does deserve yeah. many honks. <laughs> and we was blown away mm. because it, it led us down this whole thing of, like the harmonic tremolo, um, and then we did an episode with the yeah before before Joey and before Blake Mills. Right, mm. the harmonic tremolo wasn't really a thing, was it? Right. Well, it? Obviously, it was a thing, but it's been a thing for a long time. Of right, course, right, yeah. since about right. 1961 or whatever it was. <clears throat> right, but, uh, it's or, been a sleeper effect. Yeah, <laughs> but it kind of even now you say to people harmonic tremolo, and they're like, mm, don't like tremolo. It's right, like, it's not. It's, right, it's yeah, kind of different. Yeah. yeah. How did you? What made you guys get into it? How did you stumble into it? Uh, yeah, I mean, the same thing. It was really just born out of these sounds that Blake was putting out mm. and just just loving, like, again, like using how you said it's not really a tremolo exactly, right? And so it's more of like this flavor. Sure. Um, and I f sort of was finding that you could set it to, um, my, like my favorite place to set it is to where you don't really notice it when you're playing. Like right. when if you're just running around and playing, you know. It just has a bit of movement. Yeah, but it's not, if you're playing quickly mm. at all you kind of don't feel it or don't notice it but when you let something ring out it's there and that's sort of what i found blake doing a lot where it was like disguised as he's playing but yeah, then it, you yeah. know when he lets a chord ring out it, all of a sudden it shows up and it's like well did you turn that on it's been on the whole time yeah. i kind of i think in a similar way about modulation on delay mm -hmm. it's like you don't really hear it until you play a chord right yeah, and it all yeah. Starts same thing. can we hear that for a second like, yeah. so how would you set the, the yeah movement? so um We'll go. You guys should play the guitar before the end of this video as well. We'll think about it. doesn't show up on the single notes as much you know yeah. you wouldn't pick it out but then if you let something ring out it's like ah oh, it's still there you know yeah. i just want to hear that uh in a wet dry situation Thank you. 
it's just so much more applicable. I I feel like for the guys that like you said, like I'm not into tremolo. I get it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can't run a tremolo always on. No. You know, but you could do this. You know, in a way, and if you just manipulate the depth knob, where it's just a flavor. You know, yeah. it just kind of comes in yeah. in the background. It's definitely that thing, isn't it? If you if you sustain a single note, you hear like what you might think is a subtle vibrato, but then when you play a chord, because it's doing different things on the different notes. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. That's when you really, yeah. Those are my favorite effects that, that you don't really notice right off the bat, but you do notice like when they get turned off. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're yeah, kind of like, yeah. oh, what happened? Who turned out the lights? We'll turn them, turn it back on. You know, it's adding this beautiful <laughs> flavor uh, that uh, that was really serving the song really well. Yeah. So. Did you notice this though? Because that's the monument. That's the old monument. Right. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, and so that's we, very we cool. Just, we yeah. literally just smashed it. This is all the same components. All the, same stuff. the builders just squeeze them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Fit yeah. into that. Yeah. yeah box. You hired a guy, right? <laughs> yeah. There's one guy. Yeah, yeah. Super super squeezer. Super CrossFit guy. Yeah. 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 And that one, it's a bear again. The all analog thing, mm. you know, um, that you've got, you have parallel paths. Yeah. At one point, right? But then they're back to mono. But but, you've got these two filters that you've got to fine tune mm. because if you don't, you don't get that thing, and you don't get it balanced, and it just gets all it's not appealing at all. So the so signal path is all analog. It's yeah. all analog. Yep. Yep. And um, because of how you're sort of manipulating the volume. Um, through those two separate filters, um, you've got to dial each one in just right. And, and every single one goes through this painful process of <laughs> of dialing those in. And it's to, to, to create harmonic tremolo. I know we've been over this in the past, but if you haven't seen that, you won't know. Um, it's a different modulation. It varied by frequency, right? So there's one thing happening on the bottom frequencies and... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you just kind of have this like crossover point where like your low frequencies are sort of... Um, going down as your high yes. frequencies are going up and then they kind of just trade off mm -hmm. so and there's the crossover sections out of phase and mm -hmm. that's yeah. where that lovely you mm -hmm. get that chewy mm -hmm. lush thing going mm -hmm. yeah. i feel wrong holding your guitar <laughs> not because it's not a brilliant guitar but i just feel wrong It'd be like taking his wife out for dinner it's, just, <laughs> it's not right <laughs> she said you never called her back <laughs> should we hear standard do you want to compare it yeah 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 so we flip down um you, and we'll just crank the depth and we'll maybe we'll flip back and forth real quick. You lose all the signal, right? There's these like valleys that it's gone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's where you get the so chops. It's just, it's just can completely control that amplitude of the whole, of the whole thing. Yep. Right. So we'll flip up while you ring out a chord. Yeah. Yeah, I, we don't need to extol the virtues of harmonic tremolo. No, anymore. no, we <laughs> yeah. have, no. <laughs> but you guys, you guys were, you guys found this early. You know, you guys were one of the first pedal. Well, there's still not many out there, are there? Yeah. There's still not many people making a harmonic tremolo. So, or if it is, it's some mode in something that doesn't quite sound right. Yeah, uh, yeah. And it, again, it was just like it wasn't like necessarily a plan. Um, of, you know, let's whiteboard and make sure we strategically release this order of effects. Mm. You know, it really was just kind of born out of an obsession with the sounds that we were hearing from from a record. You sure. Know? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. but, but what I love about it is, you know, you can, it's one thing to take a chorus and say, well, if this is going to be a chorus, I'm going to put a switch in there and that's mm -hmm. going to become a vibrato. But to take a tremolo and put a switch and say, now it's going to be a harmonic tremolo because mm. they are very different mm -hmm. Uh, as far as the circuitry is concerned, where you've gone from uh, having that, um, the LFO affecting the entire signal, the amplitude, suddenly you've got to split that signal, mm -hmm. tune those signals, get one out of phase, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so it's a, it's a, it's not as simple as just turning off one of the parallel paths. It's not, you're you know right. what I mean? It's a big yeah. deal. Yeah. yeah. And that's, I, I just, uh, the reason I bring that up is it just highlights the, sort of obsession it takes to get mm -hmm. that sort of thing right because mm -hmm. it's you know it's not just a, a, an extra mode that you can throw in for a switch it's yeah wonderful yep and why why <laughs> is, is the answer to the why put it in that shaped box as obvious as it seems i it, think so yeah <laughs> right yeah i think i think you know so when we design stuff you know we're we're shooting for and trying to serve 
uh, professional musicians, gigging musicians, and a lot of the complaints that we hear with people who travel or fly is space and weight. Yeah. You know, and so uh, we don't necessarily want to go super small because those get really hard to step on, yeah. especially when the lights are out. And everyone but... expects them to be cheaper. Have you noticed that? <laughs> so <laughs> right. if you make it small, everyone thinks it should be half the price. Right. Because yeah. it's a mini pedal, so it should have a mini price. Right. Is it... But it shouldn't be that way because if I go to the... The Gap, I guess that ages me. Do people still shop at Gap? <laughs> but, work, but the extra large and the small t-shirt are the same price, you know? Yeah. And so. Are they? I yeah. have no idea. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're talking kids. Right. No oh, I, I need the yeah. small stuff. No VAT good. on kids. Oh. But what bothers me the most mm. is when you're looking for shorts for the summertime and then you go to buy shorts and you're like, well, these cost as much as a pair of pants. <laughs> you know, it's like really frustrating. And it's like, I feel like they should be half the price. It's half the material, but that's not how manufacturing works. No, no, no. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because the, the, the money is in making the thing, isn't it? It's, you yeah. thought about that. That, you actually thought about that. I sleep, I sleep and dream yeah. about that. So if anyone out there works for a... Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, trouser or pant, as our American friends would say, manufacturing company that also makes shorter pants. Uh, please let us know. We'd be interested to learn we more would. about that. <laughs> yeah. okay, okay, clearly we could plug in and play and get cool sounds all day, which we are going to do uh, once we've finished the talking. Um, feel like I might have seen this somewhere before. You have. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Because so this is new, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had to cancel the other one, yep. and uh, just for lots of different reasons. Yep. But uh, we we still had uh, a heavy, heavy dose, a uh, uh, heavy amount of inventory, yep. you know, with these on hand. And if you've ever run a business, uh, scrapping, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of inventory, yeah, uh, could, send in, could send you into counseling. Yeah, and you, so, could talk to, you could <laughs> talk to Henry Juskovitz about that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. could. We could. Uh, sorry, if I had a, sorry, if I had a cell <laughs> number. They're coming back. They're coming back. We, we we love you to the core of our souls. We're sorry. Mm. That's so, why it hurts so much. Honk. That's why it hurts so much. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah very but it's better now, so everything's good. Yeah. yeah. So, sorry. so the EB10 uh, is is a is an EQ boost, mm -hmm. um, and with a couple of uh, firmware operational tweaks, like adding presets. How, that's uh, very right. interesting how so you've done that. I like it because I play a. Uh, I see that hand. I play a Music Man, uh, Ernie Ball Music Man, and I play a Telecaster, and then sometimes I throw a Les Paul in. And so it has three presets for me to kind of tweak each guitar through if I change guitars through a set and things like that. Mm. So I can run it through the same pedal board because I don't have like multiple pedal boards. And I, I can kind of get the same input you? level and, <laughs> and not yeah, like, lived. Not yeah, right. like <laughs> such an abrasive tone change from song to song. Sure. And uh, so that's why I really appreciate the presets in the EB10. This is for you. Oh no! Okay, so let, um, it, it is a EQ boost preamp, correct? Yes. Yeah. You need to take over at this point. <laughs> you go for it. Yeah, so I mean, three band, tone stack, that's active. So you've got boost cut uh, on, it's boost cut shelving filters on the, on the low and high bands. And then the mid band is uh, just a fully parametric sort of sweepable mid, mid filter. Um, you can change the Q and the center frequency internally. Actually, could you, Dan, just play for a bit and could you show us yeah. that? So even between just those two sound, I mean, totally different. Yeah. You know what it does with this? Do you, do you see that as a kind of a first in line thing to then affect drives and stuff? Or do you see it as an end thing to kind yeah. of shape the final? I think that's, that's a preference and that's kind of depends on how you want to use it. If you want to use it as like the volume boost thing, mm. right? Then you want it after the drives and then your color can still be had there. Um, but then if you want to shape what signal is hitting the drives, right? Then it needs to be up front. Yeah, right. Um, so just by nature of how we originally designed it, um, it's 
another pedal that's full analog circuit, mm. but it was digitally controlled um, for some um, fairly simple reasons early on. But what that, again, it was almost a happy accident where I realized because of this, we can write some different firmware and all of a sudden open up presets mm. and sort of, yeah. That was my question earlier. Yeah. You said the F word, firmware. Mm -hmm. I guess we don't have time to go into this very deeply. So, sure. you know, most of us know simple pedals as yeah. analog sure. circuits with stuff yeah. in. Why has it got firmware? Because that's controlling something? Yeah, so real quick. So each of the bands, um, e each of the rotary pots, um, rotary switches rather, could be pots, right? They could yeah. be potentiometers that have um, essentially you know, three connections and it's like a, a variable resistor sort of sweeping through yeah. um, these options. So we've used digital pots, um, again, not for these reasons, but for some different reasons. And to, to drive those digital pots, you've got to have microcontroller and mm -hmm. firmware and things like that, which really was just making these digital pots um, be like selectable analog pots. Yeah. It just puts these like different so the, positions. So the path is all still analog. It's yes. a control Just, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, a control yeah. thing, which again, in the in the beginning wasn't because of, for preset reasons, but it, I sort of, when I started reimagining what we could do with the existing hardware, it was like the first thing I thought of. And I also thought, why did we not do this in the beginning? Yeah, and, you right. know, it was like, well, this is great. It's like, it's all ready to go, yeah. Yeah. you know? So, um, And yeah. from memory, you hold this down. Yeah, until you get the preset light preset turn on. Light come on, yep. and then you can just toggle through the presets. Yep. <laughs> and the instructions are written on the top of the pedal. That's really great. Yeah, so, so just in case. Live preset. You lose your seconds, way. Save, you hold a second. So, um, which this is cool because you could do the three guitar thing or the two guitar thing, right? And you can shape that. Mm -hmm. Or what we've sort of found is you can use it as um, like three gain stages. Yeah. yeah. You right. know, your first. Be so when you're in preset mode, you should say we should say that it locks it on. Mm -hmm. You can't turn it off at that point. So, um, you know what a lot of people might do is preset one is just all flat, right? You know, so it's just a buffer. So it essentially just serves as a buffer, which mm -hmm. is cool. Mm -hmm. And then you know preset two could be this pretty dramatic sort of maybe a big mid boost or something, right. um, which it's got up to twelve dB of gain on those stages. So it's actually going to be a boost, yeah. you know, at that yeah. point. Yeah. yeah. And then maybe preset three is some other color formation with the, t the tone stack. And then you add the 10 dB MOSFET boost with the rocker switch there. Let's do that. Yeah, okay. So let's, we'll dial it. I'll have the mid boost, please. Uh, Taylor. Thanks. <laughs> For me, yeah. Very so we've nice. got the MOSFET in as well, there. You say right there. Yeah, you do. Yeah. yeah. And then Dan was going to have. What were you going to have? That's good. <laughs> I mean, that, what, no. But we I'll, just what I'll through. probably would do is have that and a little bit more top end. Um, Pushing a little bit of volume there, pushing yeah. a little bit of volume. It gets uh, like transistory, overdrivey, mm -hmm. broadcasty, very nice. And Colt, what are you going for? Uh, I it will go for, uh, I don't know, what do you think? Like a scooped mids kind of thing? I don't know. Let's go. Give me something real dramatic. <laughs>
Guitar, mm, this guitar. I think we might. Nice. We'll trade. Uh, <laughs> we'll trade the Julia Monument, and we'll take the. We'll take this guy home. Um, yeah. I know we were talking about an EQ pedal and a boost there, but I thought let's push on some buttons and get some big sounds going. But what was really nice though, even with all that that big sound, adding that little bit of top end, taking yeah. a bit of the mids out mm-hmm. with yeah. that, was mm-hmm. just wonderful. Yeah, yeah, so cool. It so, brings in this like clarity thing that yeah. you don't get, you know, inherently. Uh, I'm sorry if I missed it. You press and hold in order to change the preset, yeah? Yeah. Well, so to we'll get to preset it. mode. Yeah. And then you can s- just skip through them. Oh, I see. So it's on all the time and then you skip through them. Yeah. Yeah, understood. So we just dialed in that preset and it's blinking letting us know we changed something that was the, from the previous preset. So we'll press and hold till it goes solid, let go. Now that's in slot one. Mm-hmm. And then if we want to go back to live mode, then we just press and hold until you see the preset lights turn off. Yeah. And now you've got... On off. Yeah. I think even I could understand that. It's nice. It's really nice. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah, I'm really liking how it how it turned out. I think we were just all really surprised on uh, on how much EQ uh, can completely not maybe I don't want to say the word improve, but for lack of a better term, like improve the sound of, of yeah. your rig. You know, I think we're all searching for these perfect overdrives to really or preamp sounds to really make us give us these studio grade sounds live and and just a couple yeah to the eq yeah, and it's yeah. Like, whoa yeah. you right you know? in a mix or punch you out of it yeah and, you know the, totally everyone thinks turning up or down is, yeah. is the only way to do it's that, amazing actually, yeah it's amazing how many eq pedals you don't see yeah. on yeah, boards right, of course and it's like uh, if you just try it then you you know yeah. you want so you much might, usability there so much dr pepper you might like it Try it. Try it. We do have Dr. That's like a Yo Gabba Gabba song for uh, sure. You guys have that here? No. Oh, I mean, me neither. (laughs) (laughs) Just made it up. Not a dad. I am a dad. Come on then. So, um, (laughs) the slow. Slow. We haven't seen this yet. So, this is new to us. Um, We're big fans of the Fathom reverb. And so, this is uh, a similar thing, but it has the extra harmonies in the repeats. Is that right? So it's got three algorithms instead of four. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and it's sort of like where the Fathom was maybe a little more meat and potatoes. Yes. This is a little like this is down the ethereal train way like tracks way further. You know? Oh, awesome. Right. Okay. Um, so there, you're not going to just be able to get like a spring or like a plate, you know, and just that's like an always on kind of thing. Um, you could set it up that way, um, but it's just it's kind of designed for some modulated ethereal stuff.
do we need to do we need to light some candles? Yeah. <laughs> like we need to light some candles. I was stood at, <laughs> on a road, and all I could see was telegraph poles into the horizon. Oh, that's good. And a sky, and like this car coming towards me fast with just like the <laughs> dust billowing out the back of it right and i'm thinking about what's going to be in that car right so who's in there what do they want with me that's where dan was taking me there i was floating on a sea of tapioca pudding yeah mm. oh, all right yeah. i was yeah. writing a letter with a quill pen <laughs> <laughs> you know with a candle lit you know from the war to my bride you know <laughs> with a rainy window next to me that's what i was doing yeah i was Turning a knob. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's super right sad. Here. That's turning super a, sad. Yeah. Turning a knob on a pedal, thinking... Well, you, need to come with, you need to come with us next time. <laughs> Please, when can we go home? So that was dark mode. Right. Which is um, a low octave. Yep. So they're feeding the, the reverb. The... So that's a low octave, and then there's. Yep. And so then we got rise mode. So you've got this sort of like auto swell thing. So like if you, as you play, let something ring out, um, you'll kind of hear the reverb sneak up behind. So I was manipulating like the rate of the mod and the wave shape of right. the mod as well. Little Chinese dude, hexagonal box. He's opening the box. <laughs> and what happens? Yeah. I don't know. I couldn't find the next chord. <laughs> uh, it light the box. The light is coming from the box, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, oh. I saw the light. Yeah, yeah. Oh, just, you could just... Hours. Okay, so that's, that's two of the three modes. Yep, yeah. Last one is dream. Yeah. So we'll clip here and then just play like a one, the one chord of what you're gonna play over here. Okay. That's it. Delight. Delight. 
You could literally do that for hours. And <laughs> yeah. hours. So, yeah. it, um, is it sample and hold, or is it more yeah, sophisticated no, it's just, than that? No, it's just it's just um, maxing sort of right before the edge of like oscillation, the yeah. uh, the decay of the verb, and then holding it there. So, so you set that manually uh, in the code, yeah, oh, in, oh, in right. the DSP, right? So, so and then firmware. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in and there then at the same t- at the same time, it uh, it turns off the the signal hitting the DSP. Yes. So you right. get a drag guitar coming through and then you can affect that however else you want to while it's kind of holding wow. that. Yeah. You know. And is that a secondary function? It, that's just in that third mode, right? Yes. Yeah, so in all three modes, the sustain will drag out the sustain, yep. right? It'll drag out the, the decay time, but then in dream mode, it blinks and it lets you know it's latched. Okay. Right, okay. And then you click it again and it unlatches. That's great. What are you hearing people do with this? A lot of that, yeah. Which I, that's cool. I love it. You know, um, yeah. I, I mean, I prefer like a little bit more like rock and roll with big verb. You know, so I think it's cool to get like a little bit ambient. You know, but I think like with some, you know, I, I like it. I appreciate when people get you know kind of big, loud soundscapey mm. as well. So I mean, either way, it's it's definitely like magnifying the strength of the guitar. Could you, t- you know, could you dial us in some voice. of that? Cool. Yeah, sure. I'll go. I know where you want to go. Maybe. Yeah. Where am I going? Colt, Colt loves dark mode here. Okay. Full disclosure, this is the song that we wrote for the is for the slow demo video, yep. you know? It was like, let's not, the the demo video theme was like, let's not start out with what people th- are, think they're gonna hear when they when we release a big yeah. ethereal reverb. And so let's, let's, let's rock this thing up, let's rock the show up. And so, but yeah, this is it. Yeah, let's turn it on. <laughs> You know, with the with the dark mode, uh, the idea was, you know, I think was to go a traditional way with ethereal reverb to really make it, you know, sound huge and enormous for people who uh, maybe don't have a keyboard player in their band, uh, but really to to help make the guitar sound scary and more authoritative, you know, in the song to kind of just give a new Swiss a new tool. Uh, for the guitar player who wants to be the loudest one in band practice. So. Nice. Yeah, that's nice. kind of where it came from. <laughs> that's great. Kind of reminds me of those bands like Black Rebel Motorcycle Club and stuff like that, where it's yeah, like, okay. do, uh, I'm stepping on thin ice here, but do they call that post-rock? Mm. I, I think you, I you would call that post-rock. So mm. I went on a, you know, when I get stressed out at work, I get on Wikipedia. Yeah. And I, Look at all the uh, so I went on like a like rock genre chart the yeah, other day. yeah, yeah. On all the spinoffs of of what all the genres are today, yeah. and you know, post rock was one of them, but I feel like post rock is a is now like a father genre with okay. with children genres yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and now you've got like neo for appropriate neo pathway. alt yeah. south <laughs> right. yep, post yep. rock or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, neo so. alt. Exactly. Neo. Like, yeah, it, ah. when somebody puts Neo in front of something, when somebody puts Alt in front of something, you know, ah. like the difference and, you know, it's it's all up to the critics. You know, they're really the ones deciding on what to do with these things. Yeah, this old rock's no good for me. I need new rock. <laughs> yeah. Right. But that new rock's now old rock. This yeah. is the new old rock. And then we're back to Spinal Tap again. <laughs> <laughs> We've been rolling for some time. We've got some cracking sounds, guys. Thank you very much for coming in. Yeah, thank um, you yeah. so much. The last it's question, brilliant. as always, is what's new? What's coming? What can you? What aren't you going to tell us about? Guitar pedals. <laughs> definitely expect. Well, this uh, is good. Delays. Guitar pedals. Overdrives. Uh, some of those. Some of each. Yeah, some of each. So I think what we can say is that uh, you know, Walrus is is uh, we are always trying to work on stuff that we haven't done before. And, oh, cool. you know, keep trying to 
to challenge ourselves, which sounds like the end of some stupid graduation speech. But we, <laughs> you know, like we, you know, we're trying we to the future, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're 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 trying to go into spaces that that are challenging uh, because that that keeps the vibe alive at the mandolin office. capo whammy, mandolin capo whammy, and mandolin specific power supplies. Yep, mm-hmm. nice. Yeah, for mandolin MIDI power supplies, MIDI power supplies, MIDI controlled power supplies. Yeah. one hundred and twenty three presets. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, voltage sag options for you know the mandolin mm. fuzzes for the, for the mandolin fuzzes and a house, tube screamer yeah. clone. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Totally. Actually, you don't. You're. You're. Yeah. We should. We should have talked about this earlier. But clones weren't really ever your thing. You didn't come out. We're not the very good at clone. them. You know. Yeah. I feel like uh, there are a couple people doing like this is my take on the X Y Z. And uh, people aren't aren't looking to us to provide that, right. you know, just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, people aren't looking at, you know, the Oklahoma City Thunder to provide good defense, you know, they're looking at it for a, a good, a good maybe this year. show. I know, so maybe this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 so uh, people aren't looking at Walrus passing. to do, yeah. uh, they're not looking at Walrus to do, this is our take on, on whatever. And I feel like there are maybe two or three, four great companies that are doing that yeah, yeah. really well because those are timeless sounds that we all still want, you know? Yeah, yeah sure. And, uh, and so, but we just, yeah, it's not what But we're general doing. direction of travel, um, more technology, more features, more functions, simpler? I'd say there'll be some of, of more and less. I'd say there's some of both. Yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. I the stuff that I'm working on right now, I would say is the f- is the funnest, I think gonna be some of the coolest I've ever worked on. Yeah. So that's most awesome. I'm most excited about the stuff that's on the bench right now. That's great. Yeah. So we found out nothing. Is, is <laughs> yeah. Literally, but, it was, so what? Now we made the video longer. Nam, new stuff. Nam? <laughs> there will all, yeah, there'll always be new oh, stuff at Nam. Sure. So I mean, we'll show up to Nam prepared, and uh, and and it should be a lot of fun. It should be a whole lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. you know, you're you're really not going to say you're anything. Great. You're, you're True are. presidential <laughs> material, yeah. just awesome, guys. Thank you so much. It's thank been you. An absolute blast. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for having us. Um, okay, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Um, also, please check out our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is... Uh, Anderson's Music of Surrey, where these guys were yesterday. So watch their video as well. Yeah, but not well, till you watch this not, one. Yeah, after this one. <laughs> after this one. <laughs> yeah. uh, in Australia. Uh, Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. What's um, up, Matt? Yeah. yeah, there you go. You can buy stuff there too. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, please, uh, if you get a chance, go to that pedal show store.com. Check out our wares. Um, t-shirts, we, t-shirts backing tracks all that stuff check out these nice journals actually these are really nice journals like embossed journals you can feel oh, important wow. the first thing I noticed when I walked with in with a journal like this you could feel important yeah uh, Yeah. buy some merch strings all that kind of stuff keeps us in business so yeah, uh, thank please, you. please do that and a massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon thank you so much guys couldn't do it without you brilliant uh, have a great uh, week and we'll see you soon cheers guys bye see ya